Hey guys, my name is Atemster. Um, today I'd like to do a really quick overview of the um, C4 demo sort of trailer thing we saw. That would have been a couple videos back. And um, I just sort of wanted to go over a quick overview of um, how I sort of set everything up. Um, just for those of you that sort of want to see how it's done, so you can, I don't know, possibly use it for your own methods. The dot blend for this so this whole file will be in the description so you can go ahead check that out and download it and yeah so um, first of all I've just got a um, basic demo here um, of a sort of first person shooter set up and um, all I've got is some arms and a uh, spawner here now what we've basically set up is a animation of one arm throwing C4. Um, at frame 40 though this piece of C4 becomes invisible and it spawns a real piece of active C4. Um, and then I guess when you click again it will just pop the same animation up and um, this C4 obviously becomes visible again. Um, and so that's how that part works. Um, all these other objects are um, sort of rigged up to work with the shockwave, so when they collide with the shockwave they obviously break and stuff like that. Um, same with the lights, I mean the lights will get destroyed if they come in contact with the radius of the shockwave. Then ahead on layer 2 we've got the broken pieces of the lamp, um, the broken barrel, uh, broken glass and the burnt plants. So once the C4 hits it and you blow it up within the radius of the plants, the plants will become burnt or replaced with burnt versions of them and um, yeah, sort of adds a nice graphical touch to it. Now for the C4 part, uh, the active C4 here, we have a um, normal model with a lot of logic bricks. So basically what these are is timers and um, well not really timers, just lots and lots of checking. So one of the um, checks are if this is in contact continuously with the ground or has made contact with the ground. Um, so the C4 won't blow up unless it's made contact with the ground. And um, yeah, which is sort of cool. But um, one thing that I sort of had trouble with, or not really sure how to do, is if you, say, model a piece of C4 like this, go ahead to the physics tab and give it, I don't know, collision bounds of box, um, rigid body or dynamic, and then you spawn it and it just sort of slowly floats across the floor. Um, I don't know as if the floor's ice or something. It's really annoying and um, took me ages to get rid of. The way I ended up doing it, which also made it sticky, so you can throw it on objects like walls and it sticks, is um, I had this normal piece of C4 here and underneath I added a cube. Now this one I called ground sensor and basically everything, all the objects I wanted it to stick to I gave the um, property ground. So then when you throw this C4 it, it gets spawned sort of from here. When it collides with a wall or the floor or something it sets the property to allow it to explode to true. and it also, if you add an edit object, go to dynamics and click suspend dynamics, it also suspends the dynamics. What that pretty much means is it just floats, so all the gravity is removed, it just stays still in midair, and um, yeah, it's not affected by anything. What I've also gone and done though is um, if this piece of C4, say you throw it funny and it just tumbles along the ground and it doesn't get in contact with the ground somehow at all or any walls and you just have an inactive piece of C4 lying on the floor then you can throw down an active piece beside it and when the inactive piece of C4, so the one that isn't active or has touched the ground comes in contact with the shockwave it will also blow up so yeah that just sort of eliminated lag and other issues so yeah that's how the main part of that is done, you can probably look a bit more deeply into that in the blend file if you want. Then we'll move ahead to layer 
six down here, or I think it's layer twelve actually. Either way, um, and this is the explosion spawner. So this is the initial explosion that um, spawns trails of smoke and rubble. Um, yeah, so this isn't really that helpful right now, we're just seeing lots of boxes. So we'll actually go to the start of the process, which is on layer 13. Um, and on here you won't be able to see much, because I've hidden it. But we basically have one explosion, just gimp, and then bloat it. Pretty easy. Um, and yeah, that always tracks to the camera. So that's one thing I sort of... Um, made it look different from all the other explosions and stuff is um, instead of making a proper 3D object for smoke and stuff so you don't have to have high poly objects you can just have a um, sort of plane that's always facing the player um, which sort of allows you to add in a lot more of the planes and yeah I know sort of gives it a nicer effect and you can walk through it and um, yeah, actually it looks like the smoke is moving all around you. So after that we have a shockwave here. Oh, a shockwave. Just with the um, property radius and it's always playing the action from 0 to 10 of it growing. So that's basically just the explosion. It just blows up. If anything comes in contact with that then it will break or whatever. Um, and then we have our smoke here. What I've basically done is I've normally animated it, so 0, then 5, and 60, and you go along and it's just sort of the same old basic animation of it just suddenly in. I think I moved this down 5, um, but it fades in really fast, fades out slowly, and grows at the same time. Um, on top of that, I've added two properties, one with a um, always track to the camera, of course, and also add to the timer minus one and it also plays the action so basically what we'll do is minus the timer here when the timer is equal to zero it will assign motion to true and when motion is true it will start moving upwards so basically you have the big boom and then um, after the smoke sort of has distributed itself out along the floor um, and this time it is equal to zero, then it'll just start slowly moving upwards and fade out at the same time. Then we go ahead to layer two, and we have our trail. So this is um, a smoke spawner, which constantly I turn that quite low because they're not in for very long. Um, it's basically always moving here, quite fast as well, and it's always spawning the object smoke which is tracked to the camera. So if we press P, it's always moving like that. And I added some lamps to it here, which um, sort of light up the smoke and give it a nice yellowish color, as if it's sort of got fire at the end or something. Um, yeah, which looks nice. Then we also have our rubble here, which you spawn each part, which I've gone and sort of set up to spawn in individually. And then we come back to this layer. Um, this is just a stray um, trail, so um, I think if the C4 ends up being upside down or something, you'll still have some smoke, um, or this sort of trail just popping up. Uh, basically when we press P on this layer is we have a big explosion, so we have our fire in the background for the barrels, press P, and um, it will explode out nicely sort of hard to demonstrate but yeah that's sort of what it looks like it spawns rubble at the same time and uh, yeah oh also goes and spawns in the explosion for um, a millisecond and then you can see those nice lights here um, affecting the smoke so yeah that's that's how all of that goes so you can jump down to the YouTube description and uh, check out the uh, link there and there'll be a dot blend which will allow you to muck around with the C4 so you can throw down as much of it as you want. Um, I advise probably not more than 20 pieces if you want to sprint as it 
as you blow it up and start sprinting and the game will lag out. Yeah, so that's how I made that. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.